All right, folks, while Blockstream compiles, that'll probably take about an hour, I'd like to use this opportunity to quit, take a quick interlude and briefly describe how to download and install Bitcoin core files and then migrate them. This will come in handy if you plan on uh, spinning up more full nodes down the road because it is a time consuming process. So just let me uh, briefly explain what's going on here. So um, let's go ahead and begin here. What we would do is we would run these commands, and I've already done this on a um, new instance over here, this Ubuntu instance over here. Uh, I run sudo apt get add repository. I run uh, that update Bitcoin D. So it's ready to basically start. I haven't run anything yet. As you can see, I'm in my home directory on my Ubuntu instance over here. If you're running that um, list directory with all of the um, hidden files, nothing's there yet. But so let's go ahead and run run it for the first time. After we run it, we should see a dot Bitcoin folder up here. So let's go ahead and run that. So the Bitcoin server is starting. After that starts, I think on the first run, it'll take a little bit of time to do this. I think it'll take about, uh, I don't know, it could take up to eight hours to do that. And it's actually, if you do this on a Raspberry Pi, it's interrupted. It just depends on what machine you're using, but the RAM that's on board could um, essentially dictate um, or limit um, your ability to um, download the entire ledger um, in one shot. It could be interrupted many times. So on a MacBook like this, it'll probably work, but it'll probably take about eight hour, eight to 10 hours to do maybe. It just depends on your connection speed. On a Raspberry Pi, it can be a little more problematic. That's why I want to learn how to download a full ledger like this onto a MacBook like this, and then and then take those um, full nodes, the entire Bitcoin ledger that'd be stored on an external USB hard drive like that. Um, you would you would just copy and paste those and then spin up other nodes um, as you would see fit here. So let's just go ahead and just wait here. I'm going to, let's see if we can list a directory now and see if that, see, so if you look to the difference there, the first time I listed the directory, right? There was no dot Bitcoin file, right? That dot Bitcoin, that's where all your core files will be contained. So if I um, go into that directory, right? And list, see it should say, so there are blocks and chain state. And this will um, continue to download. I'm not sure what the actual file size is yet, but um, let me see if I can do this do it just from the directory just to give you all a visual. So if I was to go to that and then go to home, let's see if we can list hidden files. Just give everyone a quick visual here. Show hidden files. Should appear here in a second. Yeah, okay. So we'll see this. See how sluggish this is even over my network? I'm gonna have to turn over there in a second and do this. Right click. There's obvious a quicker way to do this on the command line here, but I just wanna give everyone a visual here. So it has we have 225 gigabytes on my hard drive there, right? On the, on the hard drive on board that MacBook. Currently they're 32 megabytes and counting, right? So what we would do here is we would let it run, let it continue to run, um, and then we could make it stop. Let's, we, can, we can actually terminate the, what is it, bitcoin.cli.stop. I can pull up the terminal window here. So if I do bitcoin, is it bitcoin.cli.stop? So, okay, so that's gonna stop. It's gonna kill the Bitcoin server. So what we could do here is, right, since we don't wanna have the uh, Bitcoin core files stored on this native environment, like on this hard drive, this uh, MacBook hard drive, what we would do is we would take this folder, right? We would copy and paste it or move it. Secure copy is another way to do it as I've outlined in another blog post here. I do this all by the command line with a Raspberry Pi but I'm just giving everyone more of a visual here. It's an easy representation, especially if you're new to system administration or you just wanna learn. Um, what you would do here is you copy this folder, okay? Again, this would be, also just drag and drop it, but it's just, 
I might have to do this over on my MacBook over there and just let it capture on the screen because it's taking a little bit too long. So let's just do this. So you see what I did there, right? I just, I dragged and dropped that Bitcoin core file that was in the home directory. Then I dragged and dropped it into that Seagate external hard drive. So the next time we spin up the Bitcoin server, I'm just gonna exit out of these windows. All right, we need to run this command like so. So, because we, we've moved those Bitcoin core files that were on the MacBook here, we moved them onto that Seagate, right? That external USB hard drive, that's one terabyte. We moved that over there. Um, we're gonna run this command now that'll be referencing that, those, the, the core files that are on that device. So watch, I'm gonna copy and paste that. Instead of just running Bitcoin D, right? If it was just like on a native computer like that, since we've moved the data directory over to the Seagate, we're going to run this command. See, so ordinarily we would just run Bitcoin D, but since it's now referencing the core files on that Seagate hard drive, we have to run it like so. And it will take some um, processes to verify and rewind blocks, but it will work. You will see. So that's how you would do that. So that, and this, that was a little tricky for me, actually just kind of getting around, like trying to figure out exactly how to migrate certain core files and then replicate a full node. So you wouldn't have to download the entire ledger, which takes about 12 hours each time to do it, 12, depending on our connection speed to say, fin spin up a full node for a new project. So it's just always nice to have a full node you know, that it's up to date or at least somewhat current. I think we're at block, what, 609,000 now. Um, so it's just nice to have an extra one on hand in case you have another project that's going like that. So um, you can do Bitcoin T. I don't know why when I did this demonstration, I tried launching it with the Bitcoin Core GUI, but you don't even need it. I mean, I, I really just kind of provided that for uh, the folks that are not really familiar with the command line, but you're just going to get, just get familiar with the command line. Just stick with this Bitcoin D data that, um, that data directory at syntax structure and do that. Like, so, and like I said, more than likely you're going to be using a raspberry Pi, uh, a cheap computer or a laptop that doesn't have a lot of memory on board. It'll probably have only about 250 gigabytes if you're doing this in the cheap or doing it efficiently. So what you'll want to do is you want to migrate those core files over to an external hard drive like that Seagate and then spin up your node like that. So again, this will take time if you decide to do that. Either way, it's gonna take some time, um, but you get the idea. So right now what's happening is that's gonna download the entire ledger onto that Seagate external hard drive, right? Since I haven't downloaded anything yet. So the Bitcoin, the program files, right, are on the native computer here. They're on this Ubuntu environment, right? But they're going to, it's going to run, but it's going to store all of the data, all the blockchain, all the blocks and, and the um, chain state information. It's going to be stored on the Seagate hard drive because that'll be a big file. I think it's like roughly 230 gigabytes as of today for all for all blocks and chain state files to sync up with the Bitcoin ledger. So anyway, I just wanted to give a quick rundown um, or a brief interlude on how that works um, because it can be somewhat confusing if you're trying to spin up a full node on your first time and you're like, well, I've got a cheap computer, but I don't have enough memory. So how do I do that? Well, this is how you do it. Um, and without, you know, banging your head against Google or searching around the forums on Stack Exchange or, um, you know, Bitcoin.org, I provide some um, pretty detailed instructions there. So I hope that helps. I tried to really, you know, dumb it down and make it pretty easy for folks out there. Uh, but that should give it a, give it a good wrap there. So let's go ahead and uh, take us out.